Betty Myler, president of the Irish UFO Society, who was being treated for cancer, was surprised on a recent visit to her consultant in Dublin when he asked her, so what is the connection between UFOs and radon? Apparently, 70% of his cancer patients come from counties Sligo and Donegal, which are not only rich in radon gas, but happen also to be the Irish UFO hotspots. Dr. Alacran, on Skyer. Is there a possible scientific reason that may suggest a connection between UFOs and radon? Well, there could be. Radon is a naturally occurring gas, which is a product of a radioactive decay of uranium or other radioactive ores. As radon is a gas, it is lighter than the rocks and ores, so it raises through cracks in the earth, eventually reaches the surface and mixes with air. The main human concern of radon is that it can get into buildings through cracks in the floor and then reach high concentrations in poorly ventilated areas like cellars or sometimes ground floors of buildings. Very high concentration of radon can be found in mines and it has been known that long-term exposure to radon-rich atmosphere can lead to lung cancer. But what use would the radon be to the UFOs? Well, maybe not radon, but if we look at the radon is part of a radioactive decay chain. So if we look at the chain of, for example, uranium-238, we can see that the next product to radon is polonium. And that could be of extreme interest to the engineers and pilots of UFOs. Radioactive particles are unstable particles which fall apart naturally during which process a high amount of energy is released. Until we reach radon in the decay chain, energy released during the nuclear decay is mainly in the form of gamma rays. But from radon onwards, the decay is accompanied by a release of alpha particles and very little gamma ray. The specific of alpha particles is that generally they contain higher energy than gamma ray, but travel very little as they get quickly absorbed by the surrounding. This means that polonium heats up by itself. In fact, polonium has already been used by people in our space technology as a source of heat and energy in artificial satellites or in the Soviet rovers on the surface of Moon. So we could speculate that radon-rich areas might be of an interest to aliens as a potential source of their energy supplies. But would it not then make more sense for the extraterrestrials to go directly to deposits of polonium rather than be harvesting for radon? Deposits of polonium are very hard to detect as the alpha particles that are produced travel very little and they get quickly absorbed, so this polonium would really just heat up. So it would be quite hard to find. And also mining is very laborious activity with plenty of waste. It's very difficult to hide and cover. It possibly could lead to territorial disputes with humans. So if aliens don't really want to interfere with us, don't want any kind of war to gain territory and dealing with us too much, and did not want to properly colonize the Earth, then it would make much more sense for them to create a technology which would allow them to harvest radon and then wait for it to decay naturally into the desired polonium. After all, the most common isotope of radon decays into polonium in less than four days. It's a much cleaner process. How would the extraterrestrials harvest the radon? Yeah. Uh, one possibility could be centrifugal separation, centrifugal separation of gases. We have known this technology, it has been used by humans for uranium enrichment. It is based upon just spinning the air and the heavier particles gather at the wall of the centrifuge and radon is one of the heaviest gases in the atmosphere so it easily could be used for concentrating radon. So maybe the so-called flying saucers that people sometimes see 
are just big centrifuge machines which suck in the air, spin it around and gather the concentrated radon gas. The circular shape of flying saucers would be ideal for the centrifuge device. Another possibility of gathering and purifying radon could be kind of fractional freezing. Again, we've known this technology. It's been used especially with drinks, so you may know Applejack or Ice Wine. And this technology is based on a different uh, uh, condensation and freezing points of uh, various uh, gases or liquids. So again, the air gathered in the UFO and the flying saucer could be cooled down and different fractions of the air, different gases, could be separated based upon their different freezing points. But people sometimes report orange-red glow to the UFOs. There could be a connection. When radon is cooled below its freezing point, it turns yellow, and at even lower temperatures, when the air liquefies, it glows orange-red. So maybe these orange-red UFOs are in fact technological devices for separation and concentration of radon. Maybe they are using both technologies together, centrifugal separation and fractional freezing. But what about the aliens themselves? Would they not be in danger of irradiation during the process of harvesting radon? Oh, aliens would be in danger of irradiation. They certainly would. But flying saucers can be unmanned vehicles. We know the technology ourselves, and humans have been using unmanned vehicles, unmanned flights especially, in war zones, or they would have to protect themselves by a good suit. Alpha particles are very destructive to biological tissues when ingested or inhaled. They could cause more damage than ionizing radiation. It occurred to me that the typical shape and form of the so-called extraterrestrials that uh, contactees or abductees claim to have seen the uh, archetypal grey, that maybe they are a genetically modified entity. I mean, is it possible that uh, they were genetically modified so that they would, in fact, be immune to uh, radiation? I wouldn't think it would be too easy to do, really, because radon decays further as well as polonium. The main product here is alpha particle. Alpha particles do travel very little but can cause great harm to biological tissues. So even if they were genetically modified they still have got their DNA, they still have got some metabolism which could be badly affected by these high energetic particles whether it's gamma ray or alpha particles. Some people also say that when they've encountered these uh, grey type entities that they actually seem to move in a very robotic manner. Is that perhaps they are robotic drones? I mean they don't necessarily have to be biological entities uh, for the purpose of harvesting radon. That would make much more sense really because then they would certainly be immune to weather alpha particles or gamma rays. There wouldn't be any health concerns. After all, aliens may not be present all the time here. They may just be coming occasionally to resupply their energy resources. They can be just looking for gathering some radon and then go elsewhere. So Earth can be just kind of a mining area for them. So what do you think in conclusion? My conclusion is that it could be plausible that some of the flying saucers that people sometimes report actually are just a big storage tanks for and big technological devices for harvesting radon, purifying it, concentrating it and turning it into polonium. Great. Thanks, Dr. Ivanskaya. Ha <laughs> <laughs>